Good morning. This is Mission Control Houston. I'm Rebecca Turkington, and we are live preparing for the release and departure of the Cygnus cargo spacecraft from the North of Grumman CRS-19 cargo resupply mission to the International Space Station. You're looking at a live view of Cygnus right now. This is the Mission Control Center. Cygnus has spent about four months attached to the space station after its delivery of crucial cargo to the crew living and working aboard the orbiting laboratory. Yesterday, the hatch to the Cygnus cargo spacecraft was closed, and the Canada Arm robotic arm grappled Cygnus in advance of its unberthing and release. Earlier this morning, teams commanded the unbolting of Cygnus from the space station's Unity module. It was on the earth facing port and they maneuvered it to the release position that you see now. Our release is coming up in just under 20 minutes at 7.05 a.m. Central Time, 8.05 a.m. Eastern Time. In about 10 minutes, we're going to get a go no go poll for that final release and departure. Today in the room here at Mission Control Houston, we have our flight director, Nicole McElroy. Sitting next to her is Rick LeBrode. The mission director leads the flight control team and is responsible for real-time crew safety, vehicle safety, and mission success. As in the Apollo era, the flight director has the ultimate decision authority and responsibility for the mission. However, working alongside our mission control team here in Houston is the Northrop Grumman mission control team in Dulles, Virginia. Once we end our joint operations, they are actually going to be controlling the spacecraft from here on out. Our joint operations are gonna end today once the vehicle crosses its approach ellipsoid that's currently scheduled for 7.30. Also in the room is gonna be our Capcom, that's Megan Harvey. That's the voice you are going to hear communicating with the crew on board. Capcom, it, Capcom stands for the Capsule Communicator. On board today monitoring the operations of the release of Cygnus is Laurel, NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara. O'Hara was born and raised in the Houston area. She earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Aerospace Engineering from the University of Kansas and a Master of Science in Aeronautics and Astronautics from Purdue University. This is her first trip to space. She's part of NASA's 2020 class of astronauts and she launched aboard the Soyuz MS-24 just in September of this year. Outside of her work with NASA, she's a private pilot, a certified emergency medical technician, and a wilderness first responder. O'Hara is going to be monitoring operations, but as you can see, connected to Cygnus right now is a robotics arm. So that is controlled by the robo position here in Mission Control Houston. Today, that is Dave Euler. Yes. Yeah. 
NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara is part of the Expedition 70 crew you see here. Making up the Expedition 70 crew, we have Roscosmos cosmonauts Nikolai Chub, Konstantin Borisov, and Oleg Konyenko. ESA astronaut Andreas Mogensen, who is the commander for Expedition 70. Jasmine Mogbelli is seated there to the right of him at the bottom near the Expedition 70 mission patch. Behind her, we have JAXA astronaut, that's Japanese Space Agency astronaut, Satoshi Furukawa. And on the far right is NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara, the voice you are going to hear communicating with mission control teams here in Houston and monitoring the release and departure of Cygnus. Coming up in about three minutes, we are going to have that go, no, go poll to determine whether we will proceed with the release and departure of Cygnus. Our first release window is going to open at 7.03 this morning. We do have a backup release window, but everything is proceeding smoothly. We are expected to proceed with that release during this first window, opens at 7.03 and our expected release is at 7.05. Station Houston on two for Laurel. We're, we are ready for step two whenever you are. And work. Copy. This configuration checks complete. Crew is ready for release and departure. Copy, Laurel. Thanks. NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara just confirmed that the crew is ready for the release of Cygnus. Teams here in Mission Control Houston are currently polling that go no go for the release. Okay. 
Mission Control team here in Houston and the Mission Control North of Grumman Mission Control team in Dulles. Go for Cygnus departure on time. Perform steps three and four in 1.602. Starting step three. As you just heard from capsule communicator Megan Harvey, we are go for Cygnus's release and departure from the space station. The release sequence is expected to begin at 7.05 a.m. Central Time, 8.05 a.m. Eastern Time. You're looking at a live view of the Cygnus cargo spacecraft. This is a spacecraft that is built by Northrop Grumman and used to perform International Space Station cargo resupply flights under the Commercial Resupply Services contract. This is the 19th cargo delivery to the International Space Station by Northrop Grumman, hence why you will see this mission referred to as NG-19. Northrop Grumman names each Cygnus spacecraft in honor of an individual who was a pioneer in space exploration. For NG-19, Cygnus is named in memory of Dr. Laurel Clark, who perished in the Space Shuttle Columbia accident. She was a NASA astronaut, medical doctor, United States Navy captain, and Space Shuttle mission specialist. This year also marked the 20th anniversary of the Columbia tragedy. Also, in September of 2013, marked 10 years that Cygnus, since Cygnus made its demonstration flight. To date, Cygnus has delivered approximately 130,000 pounds of critical cargo supplies, equipment, and experiments to the astronauts aboard the International Space Station. The NG-19 Cygnus spacecraft launched on in August from the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport Pad 1 on Wallops Island, Virginia. During Cygnus's arrival to the station, NASA astronaut Woody Hoburg captured the spacecraft with the station's robotic arm. It was then installed by the robo position here in mission control on the Earth-facing port of the Unity module. On its journey to the orbiting laboratory, the SS Laurel Clark carried approximately over 8,000 pounds of supplies, equipment, and experiments for the astronauts aboard the station. We just received confirmation from the mission control team here in Houston that we are about five minutes away from the release of Cygnus.
Now, part of this release process, so on the robotic arm, there are two latching end effectors, or Lees. One is located on each end. It's what allows the robotic arm to grapple Cygnus. Each Lee includes a snare mechanism, a rigidized mechanism, and a latch and umbilical mechanism. Once that release sequence has begun, those snares are going to open, which will extend the, the carriage of the latching end effector to release the Cygnus vehicle. We're going to see that separation as the Canada arm retracts away. So it's gonna back away from Cygnus, and at that time then, Cygnus is going to conduct its departure burn. That is what is going to bring it away from the station. After that, we have two milestones. First, it's going to exit what's called the keep out sphere. That's scheduled to take place at around 7.13 a.m. Central Time, 8.13 a.m. Eastern Time. The keep out sphere is an invisible line around the space station monitored by the flight controllers. And finally, after that, Cygnus is going to cross the approach ellipsoid. After Cygnus crosses that approach ellipsoid, the joint operations will end, will wrap up coverage, and responsibility for the vehicle is fully on the Northrop Grumman Flight Control Team in Dulles, Virginia. Station Houston on two for Laurel. ISS thrusters are inhibited and ground M1 is go for release on time. Copy, go for on time release. Our release window is open, and we are about one minute away from that release sequence being initiated. Station Houston on two, proceeding with release. Copy. Release commanded. Copy release commanded, and I have DMA blue. Copy.
This is a live view on the end of the robotic arm looking at Cygnus. That release command has been initiated, so you are going to see You're soon going to see that separation of the vehicle from the latch blue. Copy. E Ridge blue. Open blue. Copy. Snares open. Begin monitoring for drift out. The robotic arm operator here in Michigan Station. Pen has exited the lead. Go for back away. Copy. Proceeding with back away. The robotic arm is now being maneuvered away from the cargo spacecraft. Back away in progress. Houston Station, SSRMS, the vehicle clearance approximately 1.5 meters. Copy. At 7.07 .07 a.m. Central Time, 8.07 a.m. Eastern Time, Cygnus was released from the robotic arm as the space station flies over the North Atlantic Ocean, approaching the west coast of Africa. Houston Station, we see Cygnus at four and a half meters. We copy. Proceeding with departure commanding in step four. Copy, and your go. Right now, we are in a normal and expected loss of signal or outage as the station flies around the Earth. Communication pass needs to transfer to each satellite. Right now, that data is being handed over from one satellite to another.
back away complete. Visiting vehicle mode depart. Cygnus depart commanded. Copy. Cygnus departure burn is in progress. Monitor departure burn, step five in 1.602. Reset five in one two. That departure burn is in progress. It's expected to last about three minutes. And it's going to push Cygnus out to that keep out sphere. That's our next milestone. We are about halfway through the burn. Cygnus just passed 50 meters from the space station. about 30 seconds away from the keep out sphere exit. Burn is complete. Cygnus departure burn complete. Perform step six in 1.602. Copy step six at work. Step six complete. Copy, thanks Laurel.
Station Houston on two for Lowell. Cygnus has exited the 200 meter keep out sphere. Thank you for your support. Happy, that was a beautiful release from up here. Congratulations to everyone on the ground who supported this mission. We still have a good view of Cygnus out in front, and uh, it's beautiful. Awesome. Yeah, we love the views down here, too. NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara currently on board the space station giving a congratulations to teams back here on Earth for a successful release of Cygnus. We have an updated release time, 7.06 a.m. Central Time, 8.06 a.m. Eastern Time. The vehicle successfully conducted its departure burn, and it has now exited the keep out sphere. That's an imaginary 200 meter sphere that's centered on the International Space Station. You can see it here. All vehicle, U.S. vehicles visiting the space station must provide a four-orbit safe free drift trajectory without entering the keep-out sphere. Next up, the vehicle is going to cross the approach ellipsoid. You can see it on the screen here. It's another imaginary shape. One of the key differences with the approach ellipsoid versus the keep out sphere is that vehicles outside of it have to be on what's called a 24 hour safe free drift trajectory, meaning the spacecraft would not cross into the approach ellipsoid for 24 hours, even if it lost all maneuvering capabilities. After the vehicle crosses that approach ellipsoid, our joint operations will end here with NASA. We'll wrap up coverage. Responsibility for the vehicle is handed back to the Northrop Grumman Flight Control Team in Dulles, Virginia. Cygnus has spent over four months on station. It delivered over 8,000 pounds of supplies, equipment, and experiments for the astronauts on board the station. Some of those experiments, external microorganisms, Heidi Harris, the Associate Program Scientist for the International Space Station here at, here at NASA's Johnson Space Center, explained this investigation well. The crew will be collecting samples outside of the space station to help researchers understand whether the microorganisms that are vented from inside the International Space Station out to space are surviving outside on the external surfaces of the space station. This is vital information that may drive the design of future Mars-bound crew spacecraft in order to make sure that we aren't inadvertently contaminating another planet with Earth-based life. That microorganism spacewalk did get rescheduled from October. It's currently planned for early 2024. Neuronics is another experiment for this mission sponsored by the International Space Station National Lab. 
It demonstrates the formation of 3D neuron cell cultures in microgravity and tests a neuron-specific gene therapy. Gene therapy shows promise as a potential treatment for people with paralysis and neurological diseases such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. The 3D models needed to test these therapies do not perform in Earth's gravity. They don't form in Earth's gravity. So creating the 3D cell cultures in microgravity could provide a platform for drug discovery and gene therapy testing. An important delivery that Cygnus made was the Exploration Potable Water Dispenser for the crew. This is a technology demonstration project. The crew is going to use this for consumption as well as food rehydration. It will also support other payload and experiments with potable water needs. It will significantly increase water capabilities for the crew on board. After Cygnus departs, its mission is not over yet. It is actually going to remain in orbit until early January for a very important experiment called Sapphire. This is the sixth and last of this series, building on previous results to test flammability at different oxygen levels and to demonstrate fire detection and monitoring as well as post-fire cleanup capabilities. SAFIRE is NASA's spacecraft fire safety experiment. It's enabling scientists to continue studying the way fire behaves in microgravity and investigate how fires grow in space. You can see here on this animation the from the fire, a Sapphire 5 experiment, it's burning a sample of plexiglass. Researchers have found that fires in microgravity typically grow and burn faster on thinner ribs and materials, like you can see on the left, those vertical lines. Um, it burns faster than those thicker samples on the right, those horizontal lines. On Earth, every inhabitable structure has been subjected to full fire testing, for example, buildings, ships, and planes. But prior to Sapphire, this has not been done for a spacecraft. Fire is, of course, a big risk in spaceflight, and this experiment will inform future human spacecraft designed to ensure crew safety. Sapphire is being conducted on Cygnus after it's departed the station to remove the risk to the crew and, of course, the space station. After Sapphire concludes in early January, Cygnus will conduct its re-entry burn. This is a planned de destructive re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere in which the spacecraft will safely burn up over the Pacific Ocean. So far today. Station Houston on two for JAWS at your convenience.
Yesterday, the hatch to Northrop Grumman's Cygnus cargo spacecraft for this 19th commercial resupply service mission to the International Space Station was closed, and the Canada Arm 2 robotic arm grappled Cygnus in advance of its unberthing and release. Earlier this morning, teams commanded the unbolting of Cygnus from the space station's Unity Module Earth facing port and maneuvered it to the release position. Teams then conducted a go-no-go -no -go poll for the release and departure of Cygnus. At 7.06 Central Time. Hey, Jaws. I know you haven't been able to take a break yet, but um, we, we talked down here and the OCT and, and depress activities are, are all able to be moved to the right to give you a chance to, to take lunch. Um, the one note is the VOK stow later. That has to be happen after depress teardown, but um, yeah, please feel free to, to take some time. Copy, thanks. Capsule communicator Megan Harvey here in Mission Control Houston speaking with the crew on board, looking ahead to a very busy day of activities. Our joint operations is going to end as soon as Cygnus crosses that approach ellipsoid coming up in just a few minutes. This is a live view of Mission Control Houston. Teams are standing by for the Cygnus spacecraft to exit the approach ellipsoid.
the Cygnus cargo spacecraft for the Northrop Grumman CRS-19 mission, which was named the SS Laurel Clark, safely departed the International Space Station earlier this morning at 7.06 a.m. Central Time, 8.06 a.m. Eastern Time. The cargo spacecraft crossed the approach ellipsoid at 7.29 a.m. Central Time, 8.29 a.m. Eastern Time. The team here in Mission Control just... Station Houston on two. Cygnus has exited the approach ellipsoid. Thanks, Megan. The, the SS Laurel Clark spent more than Four months birthed to the International Space Station after it delivered over 8,000 pounds of supplies, scientific investigations, hardware, and other cargo to the orbiting laboratory. It will take a little over two weeks for that final Sapphire experiment. Cygnus will then begin a planned destructive re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. This concludes our coverage for today. Thank you for joining us this morning. We hope you have a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holiday Season, and we will see you next year. This is Mission Control Houston.